Welcome to Kensington Palace. We're going to go outside and inside the palace to have a look around and bring you this fantastic video showing you another royal palace in London. With Queen Victoria's statue as done by her daughter, you approach through Kensington Gardens with this beautiful round lake called the Round Pond right in front of it. Now to the side, also make sure you visit this, which is the Sunken Garden, which has got the statue of Diana in it. The statue was unveiled in 2021 by both William and Harry, and we have got a previous video on that, so if you want to just have a quick search, you'll find it on our channel. But this is just a fantastic place to walk around, as well as you're here at Kensington Palace. Certainly not one of the places you want to miss. As you then enter towards the front of the Royal Palace to go in, you'll find that you've got Charles III, here we go, in the grass with stones. Doesn't that look very good? So once you're inside, you're greeted with this hallway. Now, as we go round, you'll also notice there's lots of different clothing designs. This is because during the time of our visit and also during the summer of 2023, there is a couture exhibition that is on right around the palace. So as you're going round, you'll find there are all different gowns. Now, if you love stuff of a fashion, you're going to love this exhibition as well, because many of the gowns are from the different Met Galas over the last five years. A number of them you'll recognize. Now, the gown on the left here is from 1660s, and this was the earliest known English court dress, which Charles II established many of the traditions associated with going back to court. And in the 17th century, women began wearing these glorious wide skirted gowns to court. The chain you can see hanging is the Order of the Garter from 1761. Now, the dress on the right was worn by Audrey Hepburn to the Oscars in 1954, and the Oscar, which is a real Oscar, was presented to Edith Head for her costume design for Roman Holiday in 1953. Both of these outfits would have been worn in the 1720s, and in the middle, you've got a wash dish, also from the 1720s. Here, from the dressing room, you've got various accessories that would use to help get the people dressed. And on the right-hand table, you've got various shaving implements. And can you see also, right at the back, you've got a wig as well. I wonder how warm that was. Now, what's really interesting is when you visit here, you've got old with new. So we've just looked at things back from the 1700s, yet when you get into one of the main foyers here, the outfit on the right was worn by Billy Porter to the Met Gala in 2019. And just look at the wings on that. Now this item here on the left has to be probably one of my favorites across the whole place. And this is Queen Charlotte's sedan chair from 1763. Now, whilst today's celebrities make an entrance by arriving in expensive cars, the 18th century court goers could be identified by their sedan chairs and carriages. None of them was more famous than this one of Queen Charlotte's sedan chair, which featured regularly in the newspapers. And an entire article in the Morning Post on the 6th of February 1813 described it as ornamented with medallions of the most elegant description. Now, what's really strange here is you've had various monarchs living here, and the last one was quite some time ago. But the whole palace has this sort of feel that you go into one area and it's one type of thing and you go into another area and it's a different type and it's almost like different parts of the palace have been bolted together, which is much like the construction of the palace as different monarchs went in there, they added different pieces to it. Now that was the King's Stairway, but here is the King's Gallery, and this is probably one of the most beautiful rooms in the whole palace, with paintings, just look at this one, of Charles I, easily recognisable with those facial features. Um, and this is the point at which I then got told off and was told I can't actually video inside. So little bits that we're now going to show you are things that I managed to record, especially for you and on this channel. But just look at this room, you can just get an idea from the paintings. I think the artwork on the walls are incredible in their own name, but then you've got to take the time to also look up to the ceiling because the decorations on the ceiling are also phenomenal as well. 
So whilst we're having a look at the fantastic artwork, let me tell you a little bit about Kensington Palace. Originally, it was a two-storey Jacobean mansion, which was built in 1605 in the village of Kensington. Shortly after William and Mary assumed to the throne as joint monarchs in 1689, they began searching for a residence better suited for the comfort of an asthmatic William. And it was in the summer of 1689 that William and Mary bought the property, then known as Nottingham House, from the Secretary of State. They paid the princely sum of £20,000 for the house, and they instructed no other than Sir Christopher Wren, the surveyor of the King's works, to begin an immediate expansion of the house. Now, in order to save time and money, Wren kept the structure intact and added a three-storey pavilion at each of the four corners, which you can see there today, providing more accommodation for the King and Queen and their attendants. And the Queen's apartments were in the northwest pavilion and the King's in the southeast. Way. these are tapestries from the 1500s here hanging on the wall just <laughs> just just sort of hanging there so you can get that close to them absolutely incredible now for the next 70 years this was used as the royal palace by the kings and queens of the time the next monarchs to use this as a palace after William and Mary were both King George I and King George II. And actually, King George II was the last reigning monarch to actually live in this place. After the accession to the throne of King George III, after George II had died, he decided to move out. And from then on, Kensington Palace was used only for minor royalty, which it is very much used today. Now, of course, some of the more recent local residents would have been Princess Diana, of course, William, Harry as children would have been brought up here, um, and many of the other minor royals also used this place as well, including Princess Margaret. Now, what I love about this room is this would have been the drawing room or the room used for entertainment. And look at that mini theatre that they had set up there. Now, the bed you can see there was Queen Victoria's travelling bed. Now, Queen Victoria has a long history with Kensington Palace because in the room we're going to show you in just one second, she was born. Now, how about this for a ballroom? If you look at the candelabras, just look, you can see the statues twirling round on the top of them, just to signify where people would have danced. It's incredible to think that many parties would have been held here. Now, this is the room in which Queen Victoria was born. So Victoria was born here on the 24th of May, 1819, and lived here during her young time. But in 1837, she was awoken to be told that her uncle, King William IV, had died and that she was the queen. Now, she just took her name of Victoria and then held her first privy council in the Red Saloon at the palace, which is right here. Now, interestingly enough, she very, very promptly moved to Buckingham Palace and then granted the rooms in Kensington Palace to her family and the retired retainers, which include the Duke and Duchess of Teck, the parents of Queen Mary. So the grounds surrounding Kensington Palace are absolutely beautiful. And of course, Kensington Gardens is adjoined directly to Hyde Park. So you are right bang in the centre of London. I think for me, visiting the palace, I'm probably expecting a lot more. It didn't really feel palatial inside, if you know what I mean, after you've been to the Tower of London and also after you've been to Hampton Court as well, which will be a video which we'll be featuring on this channel very, very shortly. Now, yes, it's got various royal aspects to it, but as you can see, just by this piece of film here, you've got one building, which is the building on the right, done by Sir Christopher Wren, and then you've got other buildings sort of adjoined to it. Now, one of the things I did love here is they've got wild meadows around the outside of it. So you've got all these wild poppies and everything else which are growing just outside Kensington Palace, which also on a summer's day makes it a beautiful place to come. In my opinion, I'm glad I came. Glad I came and had a look. Didn't really like having the fashion aspect mixed with the palace as well. I thought it sort of took it away. Um, but I probably will come back to try and take it in a bit further. But there are so many other great palaces around, especially around the London area to visit. So they're well worth doing. And of course, we've got Hampton Court coming at a later point. But of course, the best palace of all has to be without doubt the Tower of London, which many people just think of a prison. And I put a link to our video to our guide to Tower of London up in the top right hand corner for you. So I'll see you in there.